Comparing steel to wood is kind of an interesting exercise because steel is obviously much more permanent. You know, wood can be damaged by water and steel can be damaged by water, but the water damage on a piece of steel progresses over decades rather than just over months and years. Steel is more expensive than wood. In the old relationship of carpentry work where the material costs just about exactly what the labor costs to assemble it is not true in steel at all. Steel is expensive. And yes, the assembly is slow and sometimes expensive also. Steel is just an expensive product. I guess because of, well, a lot of reasons, but what it boils down to is steel costs money. Which, along with the fact that it has its own very specialized skill sets to work with it, means there's quite a barrier to entry in working with steel. I can remember being, frankly, intimidated walking into steel yards and talking to steel suppliers and not knowing the actual sizes and call-outs and specifications of the material that I needed and just really feeling ignorant when I was standing at the front counter talking to those people. Whereas with wood, pretty much the first time we walk into a lumber yard, we think we know what plywood is and what a two by four is and we are not afraid to jump into that world usually. Besides the lack of familiarity really from our earliest days, the fact that you have to either be able to drill through steel or weld it in order to connect it. You have to be able to bolt it together and make sure that everything fits exactly. It means that most of us just are not that familiar buying something that expensive where the assembly and the use of it relies on skills that we don't feel confident in. So a lot of people get shut out compared to wood. Boy, it hurts me to admit this, but I made this lintel, this top piece, two and a quarter inches too long. Now it's a long story and I'm not going to bore you with those details. Let me rephrase that, I'm not going to amuse you with those details. But the darn thing's too long and I've put the cap on the end and I've welded it, but the big problem is I've drilled these six holes in here which match the six holes in the end of the trimmers. And so I've got to cut the end of this off, I've got to weld these holes full, I've got to grind them off, I've got to remark, I've got to lay out the six holes again, very close, I mean within, you know, maybe a 32nd of an inch, and then I've got to drill them. It's probably going to take three hours. It's the kind of mistake that you just don't want to make, but I got in a hurry, and so here we go. Counterintuitively, even though the tooling is specific and not everyone has it, and not everyone thinks they could learn to use it, Working with steel is more forgiving than working with wood. Because if you cut a wooden beam off too short, it's just too short, and you're buying another one. But if you cut a piece of steel off too short, if you're a welder, and if you've got a, a grinder and maybe a flap disc, you can weld that thing back together, and it will be as strong as before you cut it. And if you're careful, by the time it is painted, no one will ever know that you cut that thing too short. You can heal up your mistakes. These holes right here are now entirely in the wrong place. So I've got to weld them full, grind them off, make them nice, and then relocate six holes in exactly the right spot. There's a very cool trick for filling or welding um, in, a, in a spot where you don't want the bottom side of your weld to just run wild or glue 
the project to something that you're sitting on, and it involves using a non-ferrous backer rod, like a <clears throat> piece of copper, or in this case, I've got a piece of brass that I'll clamp in there. I'll show you how that works. So you take a piece of something that your MIG gun won't weld to, in this case, brass, and you clamp it up flush with the bottom side of that, up tight against the bottom side of those holes, and I just weld them full. And that brass bar keeps the weld from billowing out and making a big lump and dribbling down and really messing things up. I'll turn my amperage down and uh, slow up the feed and just kind of dribble those holes full of weld. Steel is more predictable and standardized from an engineer's perspective. Every piece of I-beam of a given size is virtually guaranteed to have the same strength, the same span rating, the same modulus of elasticity, the same everything, because the smelting and refining and um, hot rolling systems that are in place now around the world are really, really predictable and really standardized. And so there's real confidence that when you're buying a piece of steel, it's going to be exactly like any other piece of steel of the same dimensions and the same um, type that you could possibly buy. Another very counterintuitive aspect to building with steel is that even though it is heavy and it's sharp and it will pinch your fingers right off, in many ways it's easier to work with because everyone always assumes you're going to need mechanical help lifting and swinging steel beams. There's always a forklift, there's always a crane, there's always a hoist of some kind. There will be mechanical advantage in moving steel around, whereas with wood there's an assumption that, well, you got two or three guys on the job, you can probably move any piece of that structure that you need to move. And so we find ourselves on one end of a beam waddling across a job site when it should have been carried by a forklift. So I would say that in general, fabricators' backs and shoulders and knees take less of a pounding than carpenters. There's the advantage, well I don't know if this is an advantage, they both have a design element in the material themselves. Wood is beautiful. The way the growth rings provide interest and variety, the colors of the wood itself, the way it responds to sanding and to stains and to varnishes, make wood a beautiful thing so that the structure can be incorporated into the finish of a given structure. Particularly, think of log cabins or exposed beam um, applications in nice houses or lodges. The structure itself is beautiful. But recently, or fairly recently, steel has begun to be recognized for its design contributions. There's a sort of an industrial look with big bolt heads, and in fact, that's what's going on here at Gary Fadness's new storefront. He wanted an industrial look into his design and drafting business. How interesting is it that here I am working on the storefront of the man who was working on helping me design our spec house, mostly out of wood and concrete, and now I'm installing structural steel primarily for its design capability in the front of his new storefront. There's a beautiful sort of a circular, ironic timelessness to that, isn't there? I'm a carpenter first, always will be, can't help it because that's where I've spent most of my time. And then because concrete is always part of carpentry and I kind of went down a commercial concrete road in Las Vegas, concrete is probably my next most significant skill set. But I've always been thankful that I could use and was familiar with how to work with steel. 
especially since I became a general contractor back home in Oregon 25 years ago. The ability to build with steel set me apart from a lot of my small general contractor competition. Not only did it enable me to be more competitive in bidding, but in it, it, it made it automatic for me to propose design solutions to people that other guys just weren't talking about. Because when you can use steel, you look for opportunities to use it. And people aren't in the habit of thinking about steel as a solution to their remodeling or addition or landscaping problems. And so when you come along and say, yeah, we can do that with steel, you have their attention and their checkbooks are open and the creativity becomes important and you can talk to the engineers and it just increases your value to everybody concerned. At least it has for me. And I'm looking forward to a lot more years spent working with steel in various applications. So the front of his shop here is not quite done, as you can see. He's going to have a nice sign hanging up on the front of the parapet wall. The interior, the, the door back into his actual store, there's work to be done in there. But look how this ironwork makes the front of this business pop, makes it stand out. If we would have done this out of wood, yeah, okay. It would have been pretty well camouflaged, wouldn't it? Or if we would have just healed it up with masonry and paint, which certainly could have been done, it would have been innocuous. It would have blended right in. No one would have had any sort of a comment to make in either direction. But when you do something with steel, brother, there's some drama. There's some, there's some neon sign action going on. Well, not exactly neon sign, but you see what I mean. There is something about his store that will always set it apart on this little street in this little town in southwestern Oregon. 